If there's a right way to do something, then, as we've seen, there's usually a wrong way. Luckily, many tasks limit the dangers of attempting something the wrong way. As part three of our four-part series, this video will continue to explore key elements that, with practice, can help a pilot master the normal approach in landing. We will further identify some potential landing errors that can cause any approach to terminate in an unsafe condition. Remember that every pilot throughout training and in the course of routine flights will undoubtedly encounter the numerous difficulties known as faulty approaches and landings. Now, while this video will contain content on how to recognize and recover from a variety of situations, one cannot stress enough the importance of recognizing when to perform a go-around. Landings are not meant to be saved. With the immense number of variables present in any given approach, pilots are tasked with evaluating and correcting any changes that occur during the final approach phase of the flight. Generally, minor corrections are required. If at any time the approach becomes unstable, major corrections are required, or the pilot just feels that they should go around, an immediate go-around maneuver should be executed. While situations and errors during an approach and landing are truly infinite, analysis and experience has led the FAA to group some of the most common issues into 15 sections in the Airplane Flying Handbook. This podcast will address landing errors that pose specific hazards to the nose wheel and undercarriage, specifically the hard landing, porpoising, and wheelbarrowing are all going to be addressed. The goal of a properly executed landing is to smoothly transition the weight of the aircraft from the wings to the wheels. The undercarriage or landing gear must withstand a substantial amount of force even under ideal conditions, and unfortunately landings are not always ideal. A freefall of only a few inches can multiply the amount of force exerted on the gear. The Airplane Flying Handbook approximates a 6-inch freefall to landing with about a 340 foot per minute descent rate. The forces involved with a hard landing can quickly be exacerbated by the landing itself. During hard landings, any shock absorption in the landing gear system may not be sufficient to adequately cushion the landing. In severe cases, the forces exerted on an aircraft could easily be three or four times the actual weight of the aircraft. If the pilot forces the aircraft to land early, much of these forces involved could be transmitted to the nose gear and not onto the main gear as designed. The Cessna POH specifically warns against landing nose wheel first, as this can easily damage the aircraft's firewall. If an aircraft does land nose wheel first, the chance of a bounce landing is greatly increased as the tail is forced down, and the greater angle of attack can generate enough lift to rebound the plane back into the air. If a bounce landing is improperly recovered, the aircraft will return to the runway nose first and set off a series of subsequent bounces. This motion closely approximates that of a porpoise. However, unlike that porpoise gracefully swimming through the water, that hard runway surface is not nearly as forgiving. Of course, there are some common causes of the porpoise. These could be too fast of an approach, a poorly timed flare, maybe forcing the aircraft onto the runway, or perhaps a poorly recovered bounce. Pitch control could also be a factor. In ground effect, the elevator of the aircraft is generally less effective due to the changes in downwash around the aircraft. An improperly trimmed aircraft or flying at incorrect speeds will make the round out much more difficult to accomplish smoothly. No matter the cause, it is critically important that the pilot achieve the correct landing attitude and assist the landing with power or go around before porpoising causes damage to the aircraft. In many cases, the go around with full power and careful control of pitch to maintain a climb attitude are the safest bet.
Wheelbarrowing occurs when a tricycle gear aircraft is riding with most of the weight supported by the nose wheel. In extreme cases, all the weight is balanced between the nose gear and the wings. The hazards associated with this condition are actually well demonstrated by the wheelbarrow race children might play. First, a majority of the weight and forces of the landing are supported by a structure not normally designed for this, the nose gear. Second, the person acting as the wheelbarrow has a significantly less amount of control over their direction. This second part is really the major hazard. Wheelbarrowing causes a significant directional control issue. It is possible to wheelbarrow during the takeoff roll as well as during the landing roll. Both issues are caused by a lack of back pressure on the elevator or inappropriately applying forward elevator pressure. If an aircraft is forced to stay on the ground during the takeoff run, it can also wheelbarrow. Usually this condition leads to poor directional control and, in general, a pretty bad takeoff. During the landing rollout, wheelbarrowing can be much more hazardous. Directional control will be the major issue with an additional loss in braking effectiveness. Without significant weight on the main wheels, brake applications have a greater tendency to lock the wheels. If a crosswind is present, this will also push the aircraft out of alignment with the runway. Pilots must achieve the proper main gear first landing attitude prior to touchdown and smoothly lower the nose as airspeed decreases. Never force the nose down or apply excessive forward pressure in a tricycle gear aircraft. If a wheelbarrow develops, close the throttle and apply back pressure to transfer the weight back to the main gear. Don't forget, a go-around is always an option. Each of these faulty landing scenarios presents serious dangers to both pilot and aircraft. The key to avoiding each of them is to gain proficiency with a certified flight instructor and learn the proper timing and attitude of a well-executed roundout. Trust the POH, fly the speeds it recommends, and take practice to heart. Strive for perfection and you will be rewarded with skill. Thanks for watching this episode. Have fun and fly safe.